no bull. No Scotty, no Pippin, no Michael, no Jordan, no bull. No bull. No bull. Only real shit in my town. Not a fake niggas ain't round. No bull. Hi, this is Chuck Swirsky, and you're listening to No Bull AUK, Chicago Bulls podcast. What's happening, people? Welcome back to another episode of No Bull, a UK Chicago Bulls podcast with myself, Jimmy. You can see on the screen, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see who my guest is. If you're not, you probably don't know because I haven't actually told anybody on the socials. This is a surprise one. It was a little bit last minute, so I really appreciate him joining me at such short notice. Uh, he's not a Bulls fan. Again, this is a bit of a common theme so far this season. I need to get more Bulls fans on. We're gonna that's well, that's gonna happen. But we have got an Orlando Magic fan on. Probably the biggest Magic fan I know. No, no, probably he's definitely the biggest Magic fan I know. He's one of the most biased sports fans I know in general. I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Theo from Met the Criteria because he is the most uh, biased sports fan I know. Uh, without further ado, it's the man from Orlando Magic UK, or one of the men from Orlando, Orlando Magic UK, I should say, Mr. Geraint. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Jimmy. How thank are you, you mate? so much for coming on, man, especially at short notice. I really appreciate it. Uh, oh, you're very welcome, mate. I always try and tune into your... Uh your shows and uh, I appreciate the shout outs on, on, on the little quiz bit that you do. That, uh, do you know we should come up for a name for that later we're gonna have to come up with a name for that and uh, yeah every time I do it I'll shout you out because it was completely your idea you gave me the idea to do that when I mentioned starting this up so yeah fair play man you could have kept that to yourself but you didn't and that that's uh, that just shows the community the great NBA UK community that we have like, helping people out and stuff helping each other out so yeah thank you for that because that served me a lot of content over the, <laughs> the podcast I've, oh, been, I've done already you're very welcome mate. anytime so no you're like you said the community is superb and you know we're all there to help each other jump on each other's podcast and uh, promote each other's work so yeah good stuff. absolutely I'm a bit disappointed you're not wearing a Bulls jersey but you know I won't hold that against you <laughs> I thought we could get to this. So I, I chose my jersey wisely. I thought it is a Bulls podcast. So I had to go with number nine himself. I'm hoping you've got a Vucevic jersey on as well. Snap. Good man. Good Absolutely. man. Absolutely. So we've both got Vooch jerseys on. Okay, so I'm going to let you off for that because you know I'm a big Vooch fan. Yeah. I was a Vooch fan when he was in Orlando. I've always liked the man. I think he's brilliant. Uh, well, let's just jump straight into it, man. Let's start there. Let's just start there. We were gonna. I was gonna talk about the game Friday and stuff, but we'll we'll get to that. You, every time something happens, or you get the slightest opportunity, or any Magic fan for that matter. In fact, I had one on today, and that was <laughs> well, that wasn't even me mentioning you were on the podcast. I forget what it, my tweet was. It was something Bezzy about... Magic? Was it Sorry? Bezzy? Was it Bezzy Magic? It was. Yes. Yeah, I saw it. He commented and said something about, let's talk about that Vooch trade or something. I don't know. And he didn't even know you were on, I don't think. Uh, it was a completely separate tweet. So every time you Magic fans get the chance, you want to bring this trade up. So when I talk about this trade with people, I still say, and I stand by this, I still make that trade 100 times out of 100 at the time we made it. Yeah. I've got no regrets on the trade. And I understand, I understand why Magic fans are, are boasting about it. I get that. First and foremost, Franz Wagner alone. You cannot deny he is some talent. And he's, he listen, is. I don't watch a lot of Magic games. I, I watch Bulls games, but I can only really go on what he's done versus the Bulls. Yeah. And he's shown up every time he's played the Bulls. And he does look special. And yeah, part of me thinks, oh man maybe what what if 
But I, I, I love Vooch, man. So when I remember about Vooch, I just think, okay, forget about it. It's done, whatever, move on. He is special, isn't he? He is, he is. Um, so, yeah, I'll take you back to that trade deadline day where we basically cleared house. Um, I think the night before, we might have beaten a decent team, someone like Phoenix. Uh, and it was Fournier, Gordon and Vucevic's last game uh, as a member of the Magic. And uh, the first domino to fall was Vucevic, wasn't it? So it was Vucevic, Al Farouk Aminu for Wendell Carter Jr. Uh, and two protected picks. And Otto Porter, I want to Otto say. Otto Porter Jr., yes. Yeah, but he only played about four games for us. And I, I don't think uh, Farouk Aminu did much for you either. Well, he played um, two more then. He played six, so. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so, no, at the time, I, you know, we were devastated. Vooch was our guy. Vooch was an all-star. So you're thinking, right, we, you know, we've nurtured one one of these guys and all of a sudden he becomes an all-star and we're trading him away. You know, what's going on? Um, hindsight's a wonderful thing. You know, um, Wendell Carter's been absolutely superb. Um, I was having a little look at the numbers that Vucevic and Wendell have put up for their respective teams. And there's not much in it, to be honest with you. Vucevic has obviously scored a few more, a couple more rebounds. Um, but it it. it it goes with our timeline, doesn't it? Um, you you wanted Vucevic to to get Levine to to stay in Chicago, um, and then you've since got DeRozan. So it's ticked the box for you guys, isn't it? You know, it made you a playoff team, didn't it? So um, you did what you needed to do, and we've got Wendell Carter, uh, who's a diamond in himself, uh, and then Franz Wagner, and another pick. Thank you very much. <laughs> well. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that pick is going to be at about sort of 30, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who am I kidding? I can't even say that of a straight face the way we've started the season. Um, yeah, listen, Wendell is, I remember messaging you when the trade happened and I said, if you don't play Wendell at the centre, he'll be good. If you can play him at the, at the four, he will be very good. He, for me, he was never a five. I just and yeah. it, it, we we played him at a five and it just didn't work. He had to be a four. I think he has been. He's been playing at the four for you, right? No, he's been playing at the five. Oh, in yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been oh, playing okay. Tester. I stand corrected then because I know he did. He played a bit at the four though, right? He's played. Yeah, he's played a bit of four, um, the majority at the five at the moment. But once you said he's a bit undersized, but he's a banger. He, he gets involved uh, a little bit undersized, but he's really nurtured his game, uh, developed a, a decent three point shot. And, you know, the, the contract we um, signed him to, I think it was the beginning of last season, it was some 11, 12 million per season for the next three years, which, you know, in this day's market is an absolute steal. So, uh, no, we're extremely happy with, with Wendell. I, Thanks. listen, it is what it is. We, we, I, Wendell just wasn't really it in Chicago. It just didn't, it wasn't consistent for him. He was hit and miss with the fans. Some fans loved him. I think on the whole, most weren't too disappointed to see him go. Yeah. Um, we see it so often, don't we? A change of scenery. I stand corrected. I thought he played at the four for you. On the, I knew he played a bit at the five, but I thought on yeah. overall it was at the four. So uh, I was quite surprised by that. Um, but yeah, change of scenery and look what happened. Look at Lowry Markin and um, what's happening to him in, in Utah at the I moment. Know. Uh, which I was hoping not to bring up because actually Orlando just beat Utah. So oh no, we didn't beat Utah. Oh, who beat Utah last night? I thought it was you guys. Um, no, no, no. Last game we lost to. Who did we lose to? Oh, we lost to Charlotte. Night okay, last. my got, knowledge has tonight. fallen off a cliff tonight. Clearly, uh, the Is Jazz it, was in the Knicks. Oh God! Oh no! Boo! Yeah. <laughs> it was the Knicks. I've just checked. <laughs> Listen, don't take this the wrong way, Garant. I knew it was a terrible team that beat them. Um, I thought it was the Magic. <laughs> magic fans are going to come at me You're for that. You're all good, mate. You're the the all Magic good. fans You're... are going to come at me for that. Oh, damn. Okay, so that's this is tiredness, guys. I've been working crazy hours lately, so apologies. Uh, I thought it was Orlando that beat Utah, so yeah, my bad. Uh, anyway, yeah, what I'm getting at is sometimes a change of scenery and it just clicks for some players. And obviously that's happened for Wendell. Um I the, the the crazy thing about Wendell is Orlando had the chance to trade him in that draft, and you obviously got Mo Bamba that year. We picked yeah we picked him the pick before, which was at yeah. six, right? 
That's right, yeah. And I remember the balls were at seven, and I, I don't watch a lot of college basketball and stuff, but I really wanted Mo Bamba. And when he slipped to six, I thought, okay, we got a chance. And then you guys took him, and I was absolutely gutted we didn't get Mo Bamba. <laughs> and you look now, and I still like him. I, I want him to do well so badly. Bamba, the, yeah, so... Of course, we had Steve Clifford for the first couple of seasons with Mo Bamba. Um, and you see flashes of him being fantastic. It was a game against Philly last year. I think he hit six three-pointers in a half. And he was on, on for 30 points. Uh, he only ended up with about 34 in the end. So, problem is, his motor. Um, if he's, if he's you know, in the game, uh, but he just he's just a little bit lazy at times. Uh, you know, doesn't set a good pick. And then just things his head starts dropping. So he's got all the tools. Um, and even Shaquille O'Neal said it on um, TNT, you know, Bamba could be superb, mm. but he's just not putting it together. Um, and he's not getting consistent minutes. He's now coming off the bench where you know, he started a few games last season. And Wendell's literally beat him out to that starting job. So props to Wendell. Uh, I'm glad Bamba's still on the team. You know, he can do some stuff. Well, shoots a three. Well, you know, his, um, his length um, in the paint, you know, alters shots. And now that we've got ball, ball as well, you know, we, we've got course, that yeah. absolutely massive team where we can start Wagner at the point guard who's six eight, and then you've got people ranging up to seven three. So uh, it's quite a tall line there, Jim. It's yeah, yeah. You've got some big guys in that team for sure. You yeah, you really have. Uh, and of course. Like you just said, you've got our first round pick next year, which I believe is also top four protected. Yeah, top three or four. I can't remember which. I think yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's top four. And if it, uh, if it does, if it, if we make that, It'll, I think it goes to top three next, protected the following year or next, something, yeah. something yeah. along them lines. It all gets a bit confusing. But it does. you guys still love Vooch, right? We do, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, he's in a contract year this year, isn't he? So I hope he balls out for you guys and, you know, gets paid uh, either by yourselves or somebody else. Or if he wants to come home on a home discount to, to the Magic Kingdom, he's more than welcome. But, um, you know, I, I think, you know, at the moment, his heart's in Chicago um, and, and I can see him resigning with yourselves. Um, yeah, you know, he's I mean, a fantastic player. Yeah. I mean, I had high hopes again going into this season. Like you said, we made the trade very much on a win now attitude. Um, didn't quite pan out. We missed the playoffs that season, which shocked me. Absolutely shocked me that we missed the playoffs. Uh, we got a touch on the uh, draft lottery as well when that was going on. Uh, the year you had that pick, <laughs> Kendall, Kendall Gill. Uh, I didn't know was... his name, so I'm glad you knew his name. Kendall Gill, yeah. So I've got to be honest, I was just as confused as Kendall Gill was because it was terribly done. The, the graphics they put out, in my opinion, should have been the Bulls logo, which landed at... Uh, it was four, wasn't it? Um, Wagner with. No, it wasn't no, four. No, eight, eight. It was eight. Eight, sorry, you got Wagner with. Eight. It's top four protected, sorry. So when the magic logo come out we were all excited thinking yes that was your we've, pick you've not the bulls yeah. picked and we've jumped magic and uh we might have our own pick and obviously it wasn't but there was nothing on that graphic to say via the bulls or anything like that so i remember kendall gill was jumping up and down in the studio you sent me the video i think the next day or it might have even been the same night uh, but I was I was Kendall in that moment. I was screaming, "Yes, yes, we got the kept the pick, blah blah blah." Um, and obviously, it wasn't to be, and it didn't look well good for Kendall. Uh, but <laughs> I I felt for the guy because yeah, it, that was terribly done, man, from the NBA. The way they the way they did that was was terrible. Um, yeah, but yeah, Kendall's a legend, so shout out to him. Um, let's. <sighs> The Bulls fans' response when you or other Magic fans get up about the trade is that's working really well for you right now. I mean, you're yeah. what are you this season? You're four and ten so far this season. I know you can talk about all your injuries, Isaac. You know, I've got. You know, I'm going to faults. 
there's others <laughs> I'm sure you're going yeah. to. I actually, I've been rooting for Fultz from day one because that man had so much. Pre- Sorry, this has sounded like a bit of an Orlando Magic podcast here, but I just want to touch on things that I want to talk to Grant about. I really like Fultz. I know you're a massive Fultz fan as well, and I want him. I want it to work for him so badly. I just the poor man can't catch a break. Yeah, well, it's a funny story. Uh, you know, we were expecting Jonathan Isaac back last season, mm. um, and at the moment, Fultz was fine, and uh, he did something to his toe, fractured his toe, I think, just literally walking in the house. Um, and I think somebody else in the NBA has literally done that in the last week and they've said one to two weeks. So it, it seems like the Magic are either being all, um, super, super cautious when they don't really need to be or the tank is on again. Now, I think this team is better, a lot better than that record. Um, you know, when, like like you touched upon, uh, Fultz is missing, Isaac's missing, uh, Cole Anthony's missing. Um Mo Wagner's missing. Uh, Bancaro's missed the last four games. So you look at it and, my God, Suggs has missed a few games. It's just a train wreck of injuries all the time. You look at any graphic that says how many games people have missed to injuries, and we're always top of that the last three seasons. So we're getting a bit fed up with it, to be honest with you. We want to start competing and winning. Uh, and I think we're capable. In the last last two weeks, we've beaten the Golden State Warriors, we've beaten the Dallas Mavericks, and the Phoenix Suns, all with a you know patched up roster with Franz Wagner and um, Wendell Carter literally going off on them. So perfectly capable. We just need to you know get everybody healthy, and, and who knows? So, uh, but it's the same with the Bulls, though, isn't it, mate? Because you're missing Lonzo Ball. I was looking at your stats. Let's turn it more to Chicago. This is a Chicago. Podcast, well, I was just but... about to say you don't need to tell Bulls fans. Talk to Bulls fans about injuries, man, because it just uh, it sucks. But yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, so I was just looking at your stats, and you know, um, where are they? Where are they? Hang on. So you got Vucevic averaging sixteen, eleven. DeRozan's doing his thing, Levine, but obviously the assists are coming from DeRozan and Levine mostly. The Sumu's got three a game, Dragic three a game. So you're obviously missing Lonzo Ball, you know, 15, 5 and 5 guy, shooting the ball very well, great playmaker. Um, he, great defender. He's what, makes, he's what makes you tick. So you're missing your your, your primary ball handler. Um, that's, that's what it is. We're missing faults. Exactly the same. He's our engine. So you miss a point guard, you know, a lot of the, the starting lineup kind of falls apart because other people have got to step in for them. Um, so, no, point guard for me is, you know, the most important position on the floor. And You're missing yours, we're missing ours, and you look at the records and they speak for themselves. A hundred percent. I say it every week, and I say that I say it every week too, but for me, Lonzo is our most important player. Not our best, but our most important. And I think we get Lonzo back. We're talking about a completely different record. Uh, a decent run in the playoffs and who knows I'm not saying a chip but a hell of a lot better than we are without him that's for sure where do you see the balls finishing what sort of record have you um in the playing sorry um just it's better, because, than, it's know, better than a lot of uh, these so-called experts have yeah so you know anywhere between seven and ten and then you know as long as you've got your, your fit roster then you've got you know, a game or two games to to, to win them to get in. Um, if I'm honest with you, I don't like the whole playing thing. I like the the old system. I don't think it was broke. I get why they've done it, um, but you know, to let a team that's ten have an opportunity for me is just a little bit off. Um, teams are always going to tank, so it does give you know like my squad an opportunity this season but i think now we're probably going to fall short what with all the injuries um so in and around you know the 8 9 mark i think jim so but you you're perfectly capable you've beaten boston you've beaten toronto you've got a couple of good wins in there miami i think you beat you brooklyn miami opening game of the season yeah sorry dan healy who was at that game but yeah miami would be opening game of the season uh, Brooklyn, but that's proven to not be such a big deal now because everyone's beating Brooklyn. Uh, shout out Sacramento Kings. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's fair, man. I, I said between six and eight. Um, funnily enough, our record currently is six and eight. 
Uh, but I think we finish between six and eight. I think if Lonzo comes back in the new year, uh, we probably... S- I think we get in the top six if Lonzo's back. I think if Lonzo... If we had a full healthy roster from the start of the season, I think we are four to six quite comfortably. Uh, but Lonzo's just... He's just such a big loss. Uh, my worry at the moment is if Demar or Zach don't go off we're not winning games and one at least one of them has to go off for 30 points for us that's, that's how it feels you know yeah. um Demar had a quiet game last week i forget who it was against now sorry guys my memory's just shot to bits uh, new orleans but, new orleans no they beat us new orleans uh we got them tonight yeah, as uh... recording but i can't think of who it was but i think uh, demar had like nine points or something like that but he he realized that and he wasn't still trying to be the hero so he was he was passing the ball when it was needed and stuff like that, which is good because you don't want, when it's not your night, it's not your night. It's no point trying to force it. We see that so many times when players try and force it and it just doesn't happen for them. But it just feels like if one of those two, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's, It's just hard to take. I thought, we would be doing much better than we are, even without Lonzo. Because other than Lonzo, we've been pretty healthy. And I know Drummond's missed a few games. Um, Zach's been rested for this knee management, which I'm still not really sure what's going on with that. It's nice that they're taking it careful as opposed to what's happened in the past, but I, I, I'm not sure. It, it, they, Zach says he's good to go and he wants to play every game, but it's them holding him back. I don't know. It kind of just feels like there's something we don't know about with his knee, but I hope I'm, I really hope I'm wrong. It's Lonzo, man. He is the key to the Bulls winning. Mm. He just is. His defense as well. Uh, it's, and his, his shooting, what? it's just. Uh. What's, up? What's, with, what's up with your boy, Alex? It's, I just had a quick look at his stats and they weren't what I expected. And I had him in one of my fantasy leagues. And I was thinking, oh. <laughs> Caruso is not a stats guy, man. He does so much more than that. You, when you watch him play, he's 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 so good, man. He's not a stats guy. Uh, okay, you would maybe want a few more steals in there. Well, he's still got a few. I don't actually know. Got a few got the steals. Stats. Yeah, it's the points I was uh, I was looking at. I was thinking, well, a four game, but I was expecting it. You know, maybe in the eight to ten range, maybe. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not worried about that. I'm, if if yeah. Caruso is not scoring, that's that's not a worry to me. That's not what he's there for. Um, I love that man. Uh, I got a shout Garant actually because uh, when when I was supposed to meet him in person in London, it was actually Garant that gave me the heads up that he was coming over. Uh, unfortunately, obviously that didn't happen. But um, yeah, that still sucks. It's still hard to take that that didn't happen. But hopefully, fingers crossed, mate. Three weeks hopefully time. Hopefully, I'll get the chance. Three weeks time. Three weeks today from recording. We're recording this on Wednesday night. Three weeks from now is my first game at the UC. And I cannot wait against Washington Wizards. So I still can't believe this trip's happening. Quite a funny story. I woke up this morning, said to my other half, you don't happen to know where my passport is, do you? She just looked at me and said, you're an idiot. And I said, I know. I said, I think it's with yours. Can you check? And it wasn't. Um, So I had a bit of a panic before work this morning. And she said, can't it just wait and have a look when you get home? And I said, no, because I'm going to be stressing all day at work. after about 20 minutes or so, I found it. Great news. <laughs> but that was a panic. Uh, and is it still in date? Yeah, I knew it was in date because I only got it renewed this year. So I renewed it like uh, April time. So I, I was I knew it was well in date. But um, this trip has completely snuck up on me. But like Christmas is just around the corner. It's just when I booked it, I felt like I had forever to plan and stuff. And all of a sudden, it's like less than three weeks till I go. And... I've got a lot of planning to do. Um, I want to do an actual itinerary so I don't forget anything or miss anything. Um, it's going to be so cool. I can try to do some video vlog, uh, vlogs as well when I'm out there. So I know you've obviously been to Orlando to see the Magic a few times and it's yeah. it's pretty special. So uh, uh, can you remember your first one? It is. Um, first one was so a fan since 1997 from a family holiday where I purchased the Horace Grant jersey. Chicago Bulls and all in the magic. You got your Grant jersey. Nice. So this is a signed Horace Grant jersey. You can see that on there. That's sweet. I haven't actually got it framed yet. Um, I need to get it framed. I've got that one and a Tony Kukoc one aren't in frames. I need to get that done. Sorry, 
You do. No, you I do. knew you'd well, appreciate in that. Fact, in fact, I, I was going to wear this today, which is the, the, the shooting, uh, the warm-up jacket that was worn by the, the last team to beat Michael Jordan in a playoff series. But I thought better of it. I'll, I'll wear my Vucevic jersey. I had a funny feeling that might come up. <laughs> that is just, to me, that jacket, it's, it's, it's such a cool jacket, by the way. That's the Shaq jacket. I'm sure again. That's just, you look at that and it's just, yeah, that's, that's the Shaq. The Shaq magic jacket. It's a very cool jacket. Very cool jacket. I've got, I've got the trousers as well. And my wife won't let me wear them. <laughs> it's just pinstripe. Of course you have. You should just yeah. wear it. I know. I know. It's, I just spotted, next. as you sat, leant forward then, um, what yeah. chair is that you're sat on? Oh, the finals. I've got it. So that's a cover from the um, 2009-10 NBA Finals. Really? Yeah, from the one they put on the players' chairs. Well, and it's the actual one from there? Yeah, it, yeah, that's it. How the hell did you get that? Somebody at the Magic. I know a lot of people. <laughs> wow. That's very yeah, cool. Man. Yeah. That's very Price cool. Possession. So, yeah, 97, so, uh, that was your first Magic game. So, no, so 97, I was a fan, sorry, uh, I digress. Uh, 2001 was my first game um, in the, at the old Orlando Arena or the TD Waterhouse Centre. It was the Magic and the Supersonics when Gary Payton and Richard Lewis beat oh, McGrady wow. and Grant Hill in double overtime. Sorry, pig sick, because my brother was a Sonics fan. Um, but Ouch. no, since then, I've been, oh my God, I can't tell you how many times I've been, maybe about 13 different times. Um, to Orlando, probably close to 50 games. Um, and I was supposed to go last couple of weeks, but my wife, unfortunately, wasn't able to fly. So I'm hoping to go now back in January. And I know there's a, a Magic Bulls game on the schedule that I'm very much looking forward to, hoping to go and see. So uh, that should well, that be will good. be, I believe, after the Paris game, because you said about yes. you're going over sort of the 19th. I think the Paris game is actually the 19th, the day you're hopefully yeah. planning to go. Uh, so it'll be after that. So, yeah, that'll be you one to it. keep an eye on. I, I hope you have a wonderful trip. I hope you lose that game. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't expect anything left. <laughs> uh, I said the same to Dan uh, when he went to Miami for the opening night. I said, I hope you have a wonderful time, but I hope you lose your opening game. Uh, and then I felt yeah, really yeah. bad when we did lose. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. I hope you get out there, man, because it's it sucks that you couldn't go this time. Uh, if you don't follow Orlando Magic UK on on Twitter, the, uh, a couple of the guys got out there and it, they were on the court and stuff, and yeah, it looked like they had an awesome time. So I felt for you, bro. I really did. Um, hopefully they'll look after you when you get out there, though. Yeah, fingers crossed they will. So uh, yeah, only a couple yeah. more weeks. Not long, man. It'll soon come round. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, I know, mate. I know. It's, uh, it's crept up on me. Um, let's talk about Friday. So, Bulls play Magic Friday night. Uh, how do you see that going, realistically? And be honest, you don't have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. I mean, we've we've had a tough stretch of games. We just finished in a seven-game homestand tonight against the Timberwolves. Uh, we've beaten the Warriors, the Mavs, and the what else was it? The Suns. Um, but then we've lost to the Kings, the Hornets, and some other the Rock and the Rockets teams we should be beating. So it's just Jekyll and Hyde, really. Um, like I've mentioned before, we're missing a lot of players. Bancaro is missing his fourth game tonight. He may not play Friday. So if he doesn't play Friday, you know we've got another makeshift lineup. Uh, a Wendell Carter might not even play tonight. So it looks like we're possibly going down the tank route. If I'm being perfectly honest with you, um, already. I, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a big prize at the end of the at the end of the rainbow. Um, so, is it worth one more season of this pain for potentially, you know, ten years of glory Wemby. with Ban Bancaro and yeah, Wemby? So, it's tough to take. You never want your team to lose, do you? Um, but you know, you've got you've got a very good team there in Chicago. Uh, it's on the road. Uh, we're a bit beat up. So, if I'm honest with you. I'm probably going to say the Bulls will probably take it, uh, but you never know with the Magic. Uh, Browns you never know with the Bulls. <laughs> Ball, Ball, Ball might have a, a, a storming game, so 
you know, Chicago, but I wouldn't be surprised if we, you know, turned up. Uh, Wendell always likes playing against Vucevic. He really does. I think he just likes playing against the Bulls in general, but uh, he took a bit of stick from the Bulls fans when he left. And stuff. I think he made a couple of little sly digs. Um, so it is what it is. I, You just don't know with the Bulls, man. I mean, you can see us making... And this is this is no disrespect to Magic, but on paper we should really win. But you can see us making real hard work of it. It's... Uh, I don't know. I just... Yeah, we should win, but I suppose it's the beauty of sport, isn't it? You just you never really yeah. know. Yeah, um, sport's not paid on paper, is it? It's paid on the hardwood, and you know anyone could be anyone. These are top tier athletes, and they're absolutely. there for a reason. So, absolutely. Uh, I yeah. have noticed myself uh, turning into you a bit this season as well. Um, okay, whatever do you mean? I've been doing a bit of moaning about the officials <laughs> which you're known for doing i don't think you'll mind me saying well, no 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 yeah no that's fair enough i mean <laughs> it, at its peak it was the the rafter series back in 2019 i i think i've got a lot better uh, you won't see it so much anymore unless it's one particular official no maybe two there's two officials that i cannot stand and i okay. bet well do you want to see if you can guess them Bit, bit of a quiz for you, Jim. Um, no, you're gonna. Ah, ha- uh... uh, go on. Mark Davis. Yeah. Lauren Holtkamp. Oh, okay. Awful. I wasn't expecting a second one. Okay. Yeah, well, I could probably reel off a few more if I'm being honest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think you could. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, they've been, listen, a lot of fans will probably say they've been poor, but there's been some really terrible, terrible calls. Listen, I think it's probably the hardest sport to be an official in. Yeah. The game is so fast. Uh, yeah. I, I really do. I couldn't be an official, no way. But they're going to get calls wrong every game. That's going to happen. But some of the ones, man, are just, it's cr- it's really yeah. criminal to, to get so some and listen, some of them have been in the favour of the balls as well. So I'm not just saying yeah. it's all yeah. against us. I'm not saying that at all. Um, yeah, it's 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 hard to watch, but the yeah, worst thing is this stupid, this stupid two minute report that they release. Um, we got that, it wrong. That doesn't yeah. make it better. What's that? Just keep that to yourselves, man. Tell the officials and just keep that to yourselves mm-hmm. because. All that's doing is rubbing salt in the wound when you when you lose the game. Uh, nobody nobody needs to hear that, man. No. Well, I mean, what I'd like to see done is, you know, they are getting things wrong, and, and I like the fact that they can challenge. But if you get a successful challenge, you shouldn't lose your challenge. You should be able to have, yeah, you know, like they do in tennis. One. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent agree with that because yeah, you know, coaches are too scared to use that. Well, I say that it happened against the pools early. Um, somewhat. I think, who was it we were playing? God, my memory shot to bits. It's getting worse by the day. Uh, whoever it was we were playing, um, I think it might have been Nick Nurse, called a timeout in like the first like, two minutes, I think, something like that. Um, uh, sorry, co- uh, a challenge, sorry, coach's challenge, like within the first two minutes. Um, they won the game. So, no, I, uh, I tell you, it was, I think it was Pelicans against Pelicans. Um, they won the game. So it was the right call, clearly. Uh, was that was that the game um, Fuchovic got fined? Oh, was it? Yeah, possibly for his uh, for his gesture. Yeah, yeah. but man, I think it was man. fifteen thousand dollars. I think um, it was. Yeah, which fair play because that's given Bulls fans a picture to use for the rest of their lives or the rest of the time that uh, Vooch is around. Hopefully, I want to see you using that now, mate. Well, do you know I I did nearly post it the other day. Um, and I put it in my drafts, counted to 10, and I decided against it. So probably for the probably wise, I'm trying to yeah. calm my emotions a little bit with, with certain situations, shall we say. Uh, I'm not very good at, I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite easy to bite uh, when people come yeah. at me, uh, and I'm trying to get better at that. So put it in the drafts and count to 10. G Shack's a good teacher for that. Shout out to Dean, Ginger Shack. Uh, who's still coaching me to this day and <laughs> sometimes is very disappointed in me, I'm sure. But hey, I'm trying, Dean, I'm trying. Uh, all right, let's play the little game that 
you came up with for me. Uh, you want to play, yeah? Okay. Yeah, man, absolutely. Okay. So I've picked some players, and these particular ones have played for both the Bulls and the Magic. So try and make it a little okay. bit easier. Uh, one of them I'm going to try and trick you out on, because I think you're going to get these quite comfortably. Uh, so okay. let's start with this one. I'll okay. list off the teams he's played for first, because sometimes I think I'm going giving people too too much of a clue with the dates. So I'll just list the teams off, and then you can we can go from there. So in okay. no particular order, the Bulls, the Magic, the Knicks, the New Orleans Hornets, Phoenix Suns, Milwaukee Bucks, Portland Trailblazers, Washington Wizards, and the Cleveland Cavaliers. That's a toughie. Um, what year was he drafted? He was drafted in 2008 by Phoenix. By Phoenix. He was the 15th the, overall he, pick. Is he on the Cavs now? He is on the Cavs currently. Rolo. Yes, Robin Lopez. Yep. Yeah. One of my favourite people in the NBA. I love Rolo. Absolutely love oh, he's, that. He's superb. Yeah, good good banter with the mascots as well. He he is superb. Really, really love Rolo. Right. Second player. He has okay. played for again in no particular order. Chicago Bulls, Orlando Magic. Charlotte Bobcats and the Detroit Pistons. Just those four. Just those four. In that, but not in order. But not in order. I know one guy who's definitely played for all four, but I think he might have played for a few more teams. I'm thinking DJ Augustine, but I know he's played for Lakers as well. No, it's not DJ Augustine. There was one massive clue, which I'm not going to give you. He was drafted by the Bulls in 2004. I'm going to give you that. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Ben Gordon. Absolutely. Well done. Fair play. The biggest clue I was going to say was, uh, the, I, th I believe the only player, the only rookie to win six man of the year. I think that still stands, right? Yeah. I think, I think so, I'm right yeah. in saying that. Yeah. Okay. So... Uh, I I don't think you're going to get this. Maybe you okay. will. Let, let's let's try. So um, he's played for obviously the Chicago Bulls, the Orlando Magic, Detroit Pistons, Cleveland Cavaliers, and the Washington Bullets slash Wizards. Magic oh, Bulls. and the Detroit and the Detroit Pistons. I don't know if I said that. No, I didn't. Um... Can you give me the year again? But you haven't given me the year. No, see, he actually, he went undrafted in 96. Undrafted in 96. And he started on the Bulls? No, Washington. Oh, my God. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Big Ben Wallace. Yes. Wow. Wow, fair play. Okay, I'm not even giving you dates that deep, either. That was a deep, that was a deep dive. That one. I didn't think you were getting that one. I really didn't think you were getting that one. Okay, I'm gonna. I think you're gonna get this one too easily. But this one hasn't played for the Bulls. I'm gonna say that. Okay. okay? So Scott the team... <laughs> Oh man, too good. Yeah, Scott Styles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wow. But he was okay. your coach. He was I our coach. That yeah, so I didn't want to go into the coaching thing, but yeah, I was going to get there. But yeah, he's, yeah, wow, fair play. There's one more. I've made it really easy at the end because I actually thought you were going to struggle with the Ben Wallace one. Um, but this one, uh, Chicago Bulls, Orlando Magic, uh, Los Angeles Lakers. Boo. 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 There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you said the... we weren't going to mention them. Well, I didn't think we were, actually. I forgot about this. Um, uh, Chicago Bulls, Orlando Magic, LA Lakers, and Seattle Supersonics. That would be Horace Grant. It would indeed. I knew you would have no problem whatsoever getting that. Someone we both love. 
Um, I won't say his famous quote that was on The Last Dance because I don't use bad language on this podcast, but it's, uh, it's a great quote. Google it if you don't know. Is that um, the one when he said Chicago has great fans, but Orlando has better fans? Not that one. No, 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 no. It wasn't that quote. So, uh, yeah, ignore that. I'll probably cut that in the edit, I think. That's fine, mate. That's fine. <laughs> uh, Geraint, thank you so much, man. I've enjoyed this. I know we've got quite a bit Orlando Magic heavy, but I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed chatting to you and stuff. So thank you for joining very me, man. Well, very welcome. Anytime you want me, mate. And, you know, we'll have to have you back on uh, our Penny for Your Thoughts podcast. You've been on it once before. Uh, we've enjoyed having you on there. We like the uh, we like the banter, don't we? Especially Absolutely. you and me. We Absolutely. go back and forth all the time. So uh, and that's what it's all about. We have a bit of a laugh with it all. Uh, we don't take ourselves too seriously, and uh, it's all love. Yeah, man, it's all love for sure. Sometimes we go quite heavy, but we know it's not personal. It's all good. Uh, yeah. yeah, give your guys a shout out as well, man. Before you go, I know we touched on it earlier, but shout out your handles and stuff. And obviously, like you just said, your podcast and that as well. So. Yeah, okay, we'll do. Yeah, uh, so we're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, uh, all at Orlando Magic UK. Uh, then myself, I'm on Twitter with uh, the handle Geraint with one instead of the I. And then obviously, uh, Mikey, Paul, and Gary are also on Twitter. Uh, their handles could be found. You'll probably see their tweets sort of floating around the magic ones. Uh, and we're also on YouTube. So any subscribers to YouTube, we'd greatly appreciate it because we're trying to get to a thousand and uh, it's, a, it's a slog. It's a slog. It really is, man. I am way off, way off that. But once you get to a thousand, you can do direct live videos, I believe, right? That's it. You've makes got life it. a lot easier. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, shout out to your Orlando Magic UK guys. Uh, you're up there in the GOAT tier section of fan accounts. Uh, you guys, uh, Miami Heat, are probably the top two in my opinion i don't think the other guys will mind me saying that uh what you do is unbelievable so yeah shout out to all of you guys thank you appreciate um, that but yeah thanks again man thanks for coming on and uh yeah we'll definitely catch up soon have an awesome time i hope you get to orlando in january i really do uh and have an awesome time man right back at you for december mate hope you get thanks, some w's man. Thanks, man. And love to the family, too. Uh, guys, thank you for listening, for watching. Uh, we'll be back next week again with another episode. Work's crazy at the moment, so Wednesdays is kind of my best day to record. So I think I'm going to start just recording on a Wednesday. So hopefully they should be dropping Thursday when you wake up Thursday morning. They should be on the feed. So thanks to everyone for taking the time to listen and watching. And uh, we'll be back soon. Enjoy the games for the rest of the week, guys. Go Bulls!